Hey there, it is Tomster here on the behalf of Indie Talk to Productions, and we have finally made it to the last episode of the series. Thank you very much for following along if you have been, and uh, yeah, it's been a ride. So, starting off, we're gonna get that headstock inlay put in place. So, holding it in place, I score the wood with a scalpel, then go back and make that cut a little bit deeper. I'm using the cut to cut method, so I'm cutting down and at a slight little angle and then removing excess material by cutting into that score that I've just made. Like this. So make a deep cut and cut toward what you just made. This way I get that nice, nice crisp line. Don't get any tear out, and that would be really bad before moving on to using inlay chisels. <laughs> Then once that part is done, I move on to using inlay chisels to kind of get out all the excess material. Now that I have a very deep cut to go to, I don't need to worry about taking off too much or maybe having tear out. There we go, everything's test fitted. Little bit of super glue, don't need too much, and then just pressing it in place really. Next step is getting the holes drilled out for the back plate. So the back plate is nicely fitted, and then I just use a small drill bit to drill through. This is a good way of doing it because this drills through straight into the body as well, so I don't need to try and get two holes or anything like that. Just one shot, good to go. And then once I have the holes drilled to the right size, I use a countersink to, well, to make the screws sit in a lot better and a lot nicer. Shielding. This is one of the things that uh, a lot of people do very differently. Um, some use copper tape, some use shielding paint, but I've always liked aluminum tape. It just works very well. I mean, to be fair, nowadays, pickups and all the wires that we use, they're shielded wires anyways, so you're going to get very minimal buzz in the first place. The main point with shielding a cavity is to make sure that you kind of create a sort of Faraday cage, so you don't have any feedback or anything like that. So all I'm doing is, even though I'm using shielded wires and everything like that, this just gets rid of that extra humming that you would get from any electronics. Then fitting in all the machine heads, get them fitted, make sure that they're straight using a ruler or a straight edge to make sure that they're sitting as they should be. Drilling out very carefully and then screwing them in. In general, guitar assembly, putting in all the hardware and stuff like that, that is one of the most self-explanatory things that you could possibly find. So I don't think I really need to teach you or show you how I do things because it is fairly obvious. However, you do need to make sure that when you drill access for the wires to go through into the control cavity, that you don't drill at the wrong angle. You do want to hit the cavity and not, for instance, the back of the guitar, because that is troublesome. Trust me, I've been there, I've done it. The longer your drill bit is, the better, because then you have more control over where you're coming out on the other side from. A very good nifty trick is to have your finger inside the cavity when you start off, so you have somewhere, somehow your brain kind of figures out where you're going if you're trying to drill toward your finger because your brain's going, stop, 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 stop. You're gonna drill into yourself. Of course, please don't, but it gives you a good idea of where you're going. Now that I blabbered on, um, I would like to point out that what I just did there was make sure to put down some masking tape and figure out where my bridge is gonna go. So first off, use a good ruler that is actually straight and then figure out where your neck lands, so have it leaning on your neck on both sides of the fretboard, and then mark out with a pencil onto the masking tape, then figure out the middle line, like so, or the center line, like so, with a very good protractor, so you know where to place your bridge. This makes sure that you don't have issues when it comes to lining up your strings, for example, so when you're stringing up, you don't find any issues that your bridge is in the wrong place. Now, unfortunately, I have lost 
all the rest of the actual build. I don't know what happened to, to all the footage. I tried looking for it. I couldn't find it. So when I get this bridge in place, that's it. Uh, so what you're missing is basically just stringing up, intonation, uh, setup, stuff like that. It's things that I've already covered in other videos. I'll put a link to another build where I actually do go over this stuff. I'm very sorry that I missed it, but I don't know what happened. I just, I, I've lost that footage. It sucks when that happens, but fortunately I have filmed it before in the past and hopefully I've gone through it to good extent. If not, I will. I do know that I will make a proper tutorial on how to do this as well. Actually, do I do have a setup tutorial to speak of. When I did the Guitar Maintenance 101, I kind of went through that stuff. So I'll, I'll, I'll link that one. You can go check that out. Ah, <sighs> annoying. But yeah, I do get everything put in place here, as you see. I start doing the electronics, but once again, don't have footage of that. I do have that in other build videos that you can check out. And I apologize again. But nonetheless, I hope you have enjoyed this series. It has been, it has been different. I tried out new things format wise. I hope that it's been for the better. At least I think the quality of my videos is improving every single time I make new ones and new build videos. And boy, I have some really cool stuff coming up that I filmed on my better camera. This is the last build video that I made with my GoPro before moving back to working on my really good DSLR. So the upcoming build videos, they should look a hell of a lot better than this and the camera angles and everything else. But hey, if there's anything you want to see, please let me know and I'll try and film something a little bit more in detail if you want to hear my views, opinions and how to do things on this uh, channel. Be sure to tell your friends, hit those like buttons on videos and comment a lot. Those help out so much when it comes to YouTube algorithms because I really do want to get out there. Things have been getting better, but I want to do even better. I know that this year I do have the goal of hitting a thousand subscribers. We're not far from that. I just need your help. So please, please, let's do this together. All right. Thank you very much. I am going to be back next week with a new video, so I hope to see you then. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for watching this series. See you again for the next one.